What's up, Pickleheads? Today we want to talk about two important things. The first is, what is the purpose of recreational play? Most people call it rec play. The second, we want to give you an MLP update. MLP is Major League Pickleball. They've made some changes this year. They're kind of interesting. Some like it, some don't. We'll tell you what they are. But like I said, Oz, first let's talk about rec play. Okay, Dude, recreational what's, play. What's weirder than the than the word recreational? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's why we call it rec play. But yeah. what I wanted to point out today is first of all, play for fun. If your only goal in pickleball is to have fun, recreational play, then by all means, play for fun, go have a good time. Um don't play with those that are that have a different focus in mind though. If your focus is getting better each day and trying to improve your game, the purpose of rec play, yes, you can have fun, but your purpose for rec play should be trying to get better while you're playing. Os, we talk about drilling a lot and how important that is to your game, and it is, but also during rec play, when you're not in a tournament and the pressure is not on, that's actually when you should focus on the things that you're bad at and focus on getting better at those things. Um, I, it took me a while to learn that because when I first started, you just want to win, win, win. You're like, no, I'm better than this guy. I know I can be better than this guy. Yeah, this is just a rec game, but to me it's everything. So I'm going to give it everything. I'm not going to work on anything new. I'm going to play it safe and I'm just going to win. And I think that's a losing strategy if your end goal is to get better each day. Now yeah. we're going to see if you agree with me, Us. The, the best example of this is Brett Lee. He's a guy that's here in town. Spencer knows him. But he will, in rec play, I'd say he loses probably 90% of the time in rec play. And then he gets into a tournament, and he's either in the finals or he'll win, and it's 5-0. But he's yeah. always, he always performs so well in tournaments. It's basically just because he's having fun during rec play. We're just doing the most random stuff. And it's to his detriment in rec play a lot of the time, but it pays off because he's just working on things. He's just relaxed. He's just having fun. And then when he goes into the tournament, he has that same mindset and same personality, but he's worked on his weaknesses at the same time. So he just like has this killer mindset of it's no pressure. It's just fun. And he right. always makes it to the finals, every tournament. And everybody's just blown away because they're like, what the heck, dude? I just beat you in rec play, and now you beat me in this tournament. It's like, yeah, that's <laughs> Brett Lee. He's he's not going hard in rec play at all. He's just there to have fun. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you see like the real Brett Lee in an actual tournament. He comes out. Uh, but at the same time, he keeps that mindset. But yeah, I totally agree. I think recreation play is a great time to work on your weaknesses, I've been working on my two-handed backhand ever since drilling with Colin Chick and getting my wrist implemented. And it's yeah. funny. It's just up and down. It's like <laughs> first game, everything's in, and I'm like, holy crap, I got it down. Next game, everything, I pop up. and So it can be frustrating, but you just got to stick with it. And you're, oh. you know, you're going to have a lot more fun winning, obviously. So I don't think it should be to the point of – losing every match but you should you should definitely like set a barrier for yourself saying hey if i get down by five points i'm going to stop working on this and just focus on coming back once i've come back or got a point ahead or a couple points ahead then i'll start working on it again yeah, so that's that's point. my opinion i think that you should keep it close because i don't know if you're not having fun then you're not going to improve either and i think that the best way to have fun is to win but maybe yeah, that's no, just me. I, I, I agree with that for sure. Um, but I think it's even more fun to win in a tournament than it is to win a rec game yep. against, you know, something that's unknown. I don't think a rec game, well, I know a rec game <clears> definitely <throat> doesn't mean as much to win. And maybe that's because your opponents are working on a part of their game that they don't typically do. So everyone that's watching or listening, I guarantee this has happened to you. It's happened to me multiple times. I'll get into rec play. And I'll say, okay, today I'm going to work on my two-handed backhand. I know it's pretty weak, but the best time to probably do it is during this rec game because I have a tournament coming up. You know, I've been working on it and drilling, but if I don't do it here, how am I going to perform there? 
and then we start playing you lose a couple points and you're like screw it i'm not going to work on that anymore i'm just going to win this game so it depends on what's yeah. mo- more important to you. Is it, is it winning that rec game or is it getting better overall so that, like you said, with Brett or with whoever, you can win in a tournament because you worked on something. Um, you can still have fun while doing it, but it's so hard to... I was just going to ask your opinion, Oss, since you're a lot more successful than me. How do you not switch that mindset i go into it like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna work on my lobs today at the kitchen line i know i've been working on them while i'm drilling but it's it doesn't work as well because i'm not drilling with as many people and it's a little bit tougher it would be a lot better and a lot more accurate if i work on it in the rec game throw up your first lob in the rec game it gets destroyed because you didn't hit it far enough and then you're like nah i'm not lobbing because i want to win but what can you do so that you don't give up and that you can implement those things while you are playing rec? I think that's tricky. I think it just comes down to knowing when, knowing what's most important, which is ultimately going to be the actual tournament. I think everybody listening is going to want to win a tournament more than they're going to want to win a rec game, like how you were saying. Yeah. And so if you get into your, your rec game and you've drilled something, and it felt good in drilling, as soon as it feels good in drilling, then you need to hit 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 more as soon as it starts feeling good. My my two-handed backhand dink still hasn't felt good in drilling. (laughs) But that being said, I'll get into rec, and I'll, I'll still practice it throughout rec. Probably not the most effective practice, and I probably shouldn't even bring it in to rec until it's felt good, and then I've hit a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, then I should bring it into an actual match. But it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I just haven't worked on it enough. I haven't gone out and dedicated time to it. Only right prior to that tournament a couple weeks ago, did I actually dedicate time to it. So I think it comes down to those two things. It feels good. And then you've hit 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. And then then you show up to the rec game and let's say that lob does get destroyed. You know that the next one's going in because you've just hit 10,000 of them. Yeah, Whereas if you just show up to the rec game and you haven't prepared, you ha- it doesn't feel good. It doesn't even feel good. Then it's just like whatever. But that being said, that's what I'm doing right now. It still doesn't even feel good and I'll just do it in a rec game. I'm not getting much practice at it, but it feels good when it goes in. So that's a really what about good you? point. What, what would you say? Another- Another reason to drill it before is, and you've mentioned this before on the pod, is let your partner know in rec play before that, hey, I'm working on such and such. Say, I'm sorry, we might not win every point because there is a little something that I'm that I'm working on and let them know what that is um, so they don't get upset or or so that they can play with someone else. So they're like, oh, I'm going to play with someone else because I'm ready to win today. Then whatever. (laughs) Then at least they know. Because... For me, I I would assume this is the same for other people, but definitely for me, I can admit it's a pride thing. My pride just takes over. It's like, okay, for some reason, I would rather win this rec game because of pride than I would trying to get better at this shot while in a game. Mm -hmm. Um, So your point is killer. You should definitely drill it before. Don't come up with something completely new that you've never tried before and then start doing it in rec. Like you said, drill it first, drill it first, and then start to implement it in your rec games. And then by the time the tournament comes, you should be ready to to hit that shot. But for me, it's 100% pride. I don't know if you ever get that feeling, Oz. Like sometimes someone steps on the court and it's like, I, I just, I can't let this person beat me. Yeah. But that shouldn't be my mindset. My mindset should be on, on how can I get better today? So. Yeah. Anyway. It, it comes down to like the people on the other side of the court, how hard they're trying to, because it's like, okay, yeah, they're trying super hard and all that you're practicing is your lobs, which I can think of a specific day and a specific person. Many people that I've done this, they're trying super hard right? And Uh I'm just practicing stuff and they end up winning and then they go and gloat, gloat about it. Is gloat the word? Yeah, gloat. (laughs) Glout? Yes, Austin. (laughs) Then they go and gloat about it, right? And they're like, oh yeah, dude, I actually ended up, uh, 
I ended up pulling it out like it was a big group or something like that. I actually ended up pulling it out. It's like, come on, bro. <laughs> you know, you know that like ninety percent of the shots you were hitting were lobs, right? Like, <laughs> obviously they know, but for their, like, for their pride and their, I don't know, to make themselves feel better, they go tell yeah. everybody that they won, right? And I've fallen I guess it's into just that category past that. before. I don't. I I wouldn't say you. Not with me. You're not who I'm <laughs> thinking of. But there's lots of people I'm thinking of. <laughs> but but I would say like. Yeah, I would say that it comes down to my to my pride too, just like how you were saying. Like the fact that that even bugs me. It's like obviously they know and they're just saying that to make themselves feel better, so why should it bother me? But it still can and I think that's why we try so hard to win in rec games and be the best rec player in our town when really it's like it's all about who's the best tournament player. You know oh, what I mean? For sure. And the only way that you're going to be the best tournament player is if you actually focus on improving your game rather than winning every single time. But winning is way more fun. So I don't know. It's a tricky (laughs) one, but it just comes down to pride, I think. (laughs) Yeah. But ultimately, if your goal is to get better and you want to win tournaments, I think it's a three-step process. Like you said, first, drill what you need to drill to get better. Drill not just different things, but things that you can improve upon. Then number two, start to implement those things in rec play. It's not always about winning in rec play. It's about getting better. And then step number three is now being able to perform in an actual tournament, which can be pretty tough. But if you go back on some of our podcasts, one of them was 10, what was the name of that one, Oz? 10 mental tips for your pickleball game. That's those are the things that help me most in tournament play, but you got to get there first. Don't, don't play like everything is a tournament, you know, work, work on what you need to work on and eventually get to the tournament. Anyway, that's the point I wanted to make today and also have fun, whether your goal is getting better or having fun, try to have fun regardless, because if you're not having fun, why are you playing pickleball in the first place? Yeah. One more quick thing to mention with rec play or recreational play is that you want to <laughs> you want to hit to the weaker player sorry to the better player majority of the time in recreation play because that's going to improve your game tenfold as well but then you fall into the problem where that better player is keeping it away from you now because you've improved so much now you're the better player on the other side so now they're keeping it away from you and then it makes mm. you want to go to the weaker player which then it makes sense to just play it straight up and just go to the most high percentage shot. So I know that we've mentioned that in the past, go to the better player, but if the better player doesn't have that same mindset and they're keeping it away from you, they're not going to get any better and you're not going to get any better by hitting it to them because they're not going to be hitting you any balls back. So then just play it straight up, go to the most high percentage shot and you'll do a whole lot better. So just wanted to briefly mention that, but you were saying that there was some MLP news that I, I haven't heard about, but you're going to break it to me yeah. and I'm ready to be shocked. Better be amazing. <laughs> no, I, I like it, but I want, to see if, I want to see if you like it. I shouldn't say that out loud. No copy of me. You have to just tell the truth whether you like this or not. Okay. Okay, so 2024 MLP. MLP, for anyone that doesn't know, is Major League Pickleball. So I know that a lot of people that play pickleball don't actually watch professional pickleball, and that's fine. You don't have to. Uh, I am one of those nerds. I watch it. Austin watches it as well, not as much as me. I like It helps me improve my game. Uh, I'm a visual learner. Anyway, Major League Pickleball. Uh, it's starting up again. Teams have been drafted. But what's really cool is there's a premier level set of teams and a challenger level. So in Austin in July, uh, looks like this is going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan, In the first of its kind event, Premier and Challenger teams will be competing against each other in the same bracket. Which which I like because some of the people that went to Challenger are definitely Premier level players. Okay, Maybe their whole team isn't, but I felt like I would have, obviously everyone feels this way, I would have made different picks, right? And I would have put some of the people that are in Challenger in Premier. 
and it gives a lot of the challenger people incentive to play better and it also gives the premier players like a I don't know a, a cup check is what I would call it coming from a baseball background but just thinking like oh no what if we do lose to a challenger team you know what's going to happen to me so I think it's an interesting dynamic uh, if uh if the challenger level if a challenger level team beats a premier level team like I would love to see that but it's fun to watch yeah. either way in in hopes that that one would so it says the tournament will be double elimination each team will play a minimum of two matches. So that's another point too, double elimination, um, which gives challenger teams an even better opportunity to uh, to be able to you know beat, beat yeah. some premier teams. How, how long is this going to be? So sorry, how many, like how long is it going to be? Because there's so I many think teams. Yeah, I think it's still like a, I would guess that they'll, okay, I'm just guessing guessing now it says premier teams will be seated from one to 12 challenger teams will be seated from 13 to 22 Th this is a pure guess but my guess is they would set it up like the nba does with an east coast and west coast set of teams so there'll be some premier and some challenger over on one side and some premier and mm -hmm. some challenger over on the other side battling it out you know for and then eventually meeting together but honestly i don't know i don't i don't see anywhere where those details are listed so this could end up especially with double elimination like you said that's a lot of teams so it could be it could be pretty long but, yeah that's a lot i think don't you main... think it would be fun to watch and just kind of see how one performs against the other or what do you think i i think it'll be fun for sure but i don't think that it will depict who's who's better because you're only as good as your best boy when you're playing men's and you're only as good as your best girl when you're playing mixed so no. let's say dj young for instance isn't he in challenger yes but he's a premier player right. so the fact that dj young is in challenger i don't know who's on his team but he can only be as good as his men's partner and he can only be as good as his mixed partner because at that level, it's extremely easy to just target, 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 unless it's windy or something like that. So I'd, I think it could be fun, but I don't think it will depict who's better unless they hit every single shot to DJ. Do you know what I mean? Which isn't going to happen. They're just going to hit to the weaker player. I think that we'll see some blowouts. Because yeah, there probably will be. I Like I said, just using DJ as an example, let's say his partner is a five-point three girl because some of the girls on the challenger are like 5.3s and then let's say that she's going up against at a right who's a 6.1 or whatever it is mm -hmm. it's like Etta's is gonna out dink her nine times out of ten maybe 19 times out of 20 and that's all right. that's gonna come down to and just be a blowout so i think it's it, it could be fun but i don't think it will be really an opportunity for these guys to prove themselves because they just don't have the team behind them. You're only as good as your best boy or your best girl. That's a good point. I guess I didn't really think of it that way. Uh, I did think that there there might be some blowouts, but there might be some nerves on Premier, even yeah, though most sure. of these Premier players be some have surprises. been really solid. But I could just think I would be a little bit nervous, like, okay, if we lose to a challenger team, that's going to look bad on me, and then maybe I go challenger next time. Whereas challenger players are like, what do we have to lose? Let's just give it our give it our all. We're expected to lose this game anyway. We might as well go for it. Um, but let's just go over some of these challenger teams. I do think some of them are are pretty good teams. So okay, DJ is with Rafa Hewitt in men's, and that's that's a premier team. But both of them ended up on challenger. That's I, I honestly crazy. think both of them should have gone premier. So That's a that good could team. be good. At the same time, they're... But who's their women? I'm looking it up right now, and it's not pulling up. Their female players are were somewhat un unknown from what I remember. So when they play mixed and when they play women's, <laughs> they're probably going to get destroyed, like you said. But it'll, like it'll be interesting rough. to see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's just go over another team. Uh, what about... What do you think about... 
Uh, Travis and Pat Smith being on the same team for Florida Smash. Uh, Travis is challenger too, huh? Yeah, so Travis and Pat are challenger. That's a really good and team. And they have Martin Emmerich's wife. I'm sorry, I don't remember what her first name is. And somebody else, and it's still not popping up. But that's that's a pretty nasty premier men's team, in, in my opinion. But yeah, but yeah like, like I said, said it's, it's all about the team. So depends on yeah. who those women are. I don't know who Emmerich's wife is. I've never seen her play. I don't know how good she is, but she's good. If she's but if, she's yeah, challenger. If she's a good challenger player, then then they'd do solid because you only have to win three. So I don't know. They'd do solid enough. They could. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think the biggest MLP is trying to get back on track. And I honestly think this decision was made so that they can uh, get more viewership because I'm definitely going to watch more on that one, as I would assume a lot of other people are, because I would just just watching all of them just to see if by chance a challenger team can take out a yeah. premier team. You like don't want to miss it live, kind of too. Yeah, you yeah. got to watch it. Yeah, it would be fun. I I think that it'll just come down to we're going to see some surprises. I'm sure that some some challenger teams will beat premier teams. I don't know how many teams there are, but I'd estimate at least one will where they surprise you and probably beat a lower premier team, which yeah. would be fun for them. But man, it just really, it really comes down to who is your weakest player and are they better than the other team's weakest player? Because they can be targeted the entire time. Very good point. So it looks like there's 10 challenger teams. And uh, let me see how many, I want to, I want to say there's, 12 premier teams but let's uh one two if there is then there'll be some buys in there by the one and two seed or something yeah there's 12 premier teams um let me go back to that news feed i guess it told us on there everyone's screaming at the camera right now um because <laughs> it said they were going to be numbered yeah 22 teams so the math is correct. That so is twelve correct. and ten. But yeah, it'll be. I'm definitely watching. So I, I wonder if other people will think the same way, or they'll just think, "Oh, why would I want to watch a blowout?" But we'll find out. Watch, so that's not until I, July. But I'd want to watch either way. I think it would be fun. But yeah, it's going to be a blowout for the majority. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have we'll have to put some bets on it. So who anyway. is on? I know we will probably want to wrap this up, but who's on the, who's on like Ben John's team? I have no idea. Can we just go over the premier teams really quick? Sure. 12 teams. Uh, yep. So first draft was who? Who was drafted first? Was it Ben or was ben, it Anna Lee? Ben was? was first. Anna Lee was second. They, they understood that, hey, Ben has won majority of these events. <laughs> and Anna you can't Lee, go against him. Anna Lee has never won an MLP event, so I'm yeah. sure that had something to do with it. Who was two? She's come, she's come pretty close. She got to a semifinal, and then the very if you remember the very first MLP when she was playing with AJ Kohler, they were so close to beating Ben's team. But anyway. I don't even remember. So, so was she the second draft pick? This time around, yeah. I think that's good. Whoever picked your second was smart because it's a game of odds. And then I think Not it was Riley Newman. Ben, but I think it I think it went Riley Newman and then Jack Sock. I'm oh, pretty Riley's sure he playing. went fourth. Don't quote me on that because I, I don't have it in front of me. So the premier teams are Arizona Drive. Oh boy. It doesn't have any of the names written down here. I gotta do it by looking at them. Okay, so Arizona Drive is blow up their pictures here. Dylan Frazier, Andre Diascu. That's a killer men's team, by the way. That's a baller men's team. Diascu's been they shredding play together all everybody the time. lately. Yeah, and those two are yeah. Uh, looks like Caitlin Christian and what's her name that that's been playing mixed with Travis Rettenmeyer? No idea. Most recently. Oh man, Jesse Drawing Urban. a blank. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> It'll come to me. Then you have Columbus Sliders. It's Riley Newman and Connor Garnett are this on the same team. So that's a nasty men's team. And you have Megan Dazon and it looks like Brooke Buckner. Again, I don't have the names in front of me, but hopefully I can get through these faces. Dallas Flash. You have J.W. Johnson, Georgia Johnson, Tyra Black, who you played with recently, and then uh, Augie Guh. So I, I don't think... I shouldn't say he doesn't deserve it, but I think other people should have gone in premiere over Augie, but we'll see how that goes. Travis Rettenmeyer would have been a really good pick right there. Just saying. I think I think Augie's better than anybody in Challenger. No way. Uh, the fact that he's made it to two finals and he's only played yeah. in like three tournaments, <laughs> yeah, that's I think true. he's pretty freaking good. <laughs> that's a that's a good argument. That's him and J Double him and J Dub will be nasty. So then you have uh what's the name of this team? DC pickleball team. You have Deckelbar and James Ignatowicz on the same team, followed by Elise Jones, and I have no idea who this other who this other female player is some newbie <laughs> okay no idea and then that's what's that's what's crazy about the women's side is you can get some 5.5s in there that have never played pro or anything like that well they've played yeah. pro and that's why but they've never actually like qualified they just have a yeah, higher it's rating just not as not as deep for sure but rachel rohrabacher is freaking killer now and nobody knew oh, who yeah. she was before the last mlp that's what so. can happen that's what can happen. Uh, New Jersey Fives have, I don't remember her first name, but Humberg, Zane Navratil, uh, Annalie Waters, and this guy's name is escaping me, but I've seen him play some APP events. Um, if it's escaping you, I don't know who it is. Yeah, he's pretty new too. He should have gone challenger in my opinion. What do I know? Okay, Mad Drops. You have your crush, Thomas Wilson, and <laughs> Catherine Parento, one of the Kawamoto's. I'm sorry, they're twins. I can't tell the difference. One of the Ka- yeah, Kawamoto <laughs> twins and one of the Johnson twins, which I'm assuming is Hunter Johnson. I'm pretty sure I can almost tell them apart. Uh, New York Hustlers, you have another Kawamoto twin. Um Jack Sock, CJ Klinger. I thought that was an interesting choice with Jack Sock and CJ Klinger on the same team. He's left-handed, so it makes sense. But I do think CJ is pretty dominant, so it'll be interesting yeah. how that dynamic works. But wh- why not pick like a DJ or, I mean, because DJ can play that right side, you know. But CJ Klinger is a good player, and we'll we'll see how they do. And Leia Jansen is on their team. So overall, that's DJ, a pretty s- solid team. DJ should be there. There'll be a clash in the middle there, but they'll figure it out. Yeah. And and as far as MLP goes, I do think Rafa Hewitt deserves to be on a premier team over some of these guys. He's a, He is very good in a team setting. He just does well every time. And he does in well opinion. in every tournament. Like at Red Rock, he lost to the guy that won. So he lost to Fed. It was probably the quarterfinals, but he makes it to at least the quarterfinals in almost every tournament. So yeah. I don't yeah, know how that makes can't him quite get over that challenger. But it's probably a personality thing, though. Probably pe- people that are picking teams. I don't know. I feel like you'd want Rafa on your team, but I think people just don't like the way he acts. Some people don't. Maybe. Yeah, maybe he rubs them the wrong way. Orlando Squeeze is a pretty tough team. Tyson McGuffin. Uh, Frederico Staxrude, uh, Vivian David, and um, she played APP for a while. Now she's back to playing PPAs. Hunter Johnson's girlfriend. Oh, Paris Todd. Paris Todd, thank you. Uh, That's a you good can think team. of it any time except for when you're on the spot. St. Louis Shock. You have. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. You have uh, Anna Bright. Another no-name female. So she did this the last time, so you got to just trust her and go with it this time because <laughs> Rohrabacher killed it on the last one. 
I, I don't know who that is. I honestly have no idea who that is that she picked or that the <laughs> team the team picked. Uh, Hayden Patrickwin yeah. and um, obviously a premier baller and uh, Gabe Tardio. That's a good who's, team. Who's been killing it too. So that yeah, that's a good team. Okay, this this in my opinion is the worst team in Premier. Sorry, but this is the worst. Utah Black Diamonds. Uh, and it's probably by default, but they decided Tyler to agree Lung. to the trade. Tyler Long. Um Jay Devillier. Uh P- Smith from Utah. What's her first name? Callie. Callie Smith, thank you, and Alex Trong. I just I don't see them doing anything. I hope they prove me wrong, but that team is bad. No way. All right, then we have. <laughs> I saw I saw Alex play this this a couple weekends ago or whatever at Red Rock. She was she ended up good. getting bronze with uh, Connor Garnett. Oh really? In mixed? Yeah. She she's good. She's better than you think, and she's only getting better. So. Really, eh. really good power for how small she is, too. But she I'll was put money on the line right now. That consistent. team gets last place. And a, a challenger <laughs> level team, the first team they're going to beat is the Utah Black Diamonds. Okay. <laughs> Texas Ranchers. Texas Ranchers, you have Christian Alshon, who's just murdering the court lately. And he and Pablo Tellez are playing together again. Remember, they played together in Challenger before they moved up to Premier. I think oh, okay. that, that'll be really good. Tina Pisnik, who's been absolutely killing it in women's and yeah. in mixed. Deckel. And Etta Wright. So that that's that's a dope team. And they can all play. Yeah. I don't know what Tina's... Uh, singles game is like but they can all play singles if they have to the men can definitely play singles seattle pioneers oh, yeah. i i can't i can't go against ben's choices anymore because he continues to win L- mlp and surprise me but i'm always puzzled by the fact that he picked three people that are not singles players technically colin john's is was a singles player but hasn't played in forever so he can figure out the singles game but then when you pick Jesse Irvin, she cannot play singles to save her life. But then he won with her the last time. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. And and then they got Andrea Coop, who 100% is not a singles player. <laughs> but I think he's just banking on the fact that they win their doubles games and they'll be good to go, you know. But anyway, those are the think, premier teams. I think that's a good team, especially because I didn't hear Anna Lee on any team. Yeah, she was... I told you, but I kind of just mixed her in there. But I I think Ben John's team is really good because he's played She's with, with Jesse. Zane. Sorry, Zane Navratil and Humberg oh. and the guy whose name I cannot remember, but he is pretty new. He was a good player, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Here, I got to look up that's, his name. That's it's a good team because they have Zane. Zane's a winner. Zane's um, an absolute winner, dude. Dude, just he can win. He doesn't have as much talent as the other guys, but he can freaking win. It's it's crazy watching him in person, though. The amount of athleticism, spin, just natural really? ability that he has is incredible. The power he can put on the ball, his scrappiness. You don't really get that appreciation until you just see them in person. I'm not speaking specifically to you. I'm just speaking specifically to everybody. Like, You watch it on tv or on your on your phone and it's just not even comparable to how hard these guys are hitting it like jay de villiers this past weekend he's the most athletic dude i've ever met in my entire life or seen play <laughs> yeah and you just have no yeah. idea when you're watching on tv but then you just watch him hit it makes no sense i can't can't even describe it but it's just pure athleticism but ben's team i think that's a really good team him if Jesse they win Urban, their doubles games i don't think and, and he has Colin. Yeah, he has Colin as well. Andrea is solid. I don't know where she's been lately, but she is really, really solid. So she could just pull out of the woodworks. She's probably just working on her lawyer game too much. She needs to dedicate more time to pickle. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I don't think that they'll take. I don't think Ben's worried about taking it to singles. 
as much. And he's like, if we do go to singles, I'll win all my points. So you guys just got to get a couple. <laughs> uh, Will Howells is the name of the guy that's on Zane and Annalise's okay. team with Marianne Hamburg. Uh, <laughs> I have seen him play. He is good. He played with J.W. Johnson for a tournament in the APP, and they won. Um, well, you play with J.W. and APP. But <laughs> Come on. But he, why, he's I, good. He also why made is he a premier? Semifinal. He needs to prove that. He also made a semifinal against it. J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. So, or what no, he, he got to the gold medal match and they got silver. So, yeah, he's oh, he's okay. a good player. But is he better and, than DJ though? Is he better than Travis Rettenmeyer? No, and no, like, I would pick what? Rafa over him too, especially in, going? A, in an MLP setting. Yeah, but whatever. Those are some what stacked. Those are some stacked teams, though, for Challenger. DJ and Rafa. But like I said, you're only as good as, as your best player, so we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to see how that goes in July. When's the first tournament then? Is it this month? Uh, it starts this week. Okay. So we're Sweet. recording this on Tuesday the 7th, and it starts on Thursday the 9th. It's exciting. So exciting. Looks if you fun. haven't watched MLP before, check it out. It's a fun watch. Other than that, anything else, Oss? No, that's it. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah, I'm going to do my Rafa Hewitt. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him doing that at the last tournament. He's just – he whips all the way around the entire court, right? Rides yep. the horse or whatever it is that he's doing. <laughs> my friend Darren looks at me. He's like, D does anybody like him? Like, does anybody <laughs> like this guy? <laughs> uh, and I'm no. like, I don't, the people that play him don't, that's for sure. But I think he wins over the fans by just acting like a total dingus out there. And then he's yeah, like, and he, he rubs people the wrong way for sure. He rubs people the wrong way. I like it. But then he's like, <laughs> at the very end, he took down one of the newer guys, one of the newer singles players right before he played fed. And he's like, who's next? <laughs> and he walks off the court. <laughs> I don't even think they shook hands. Oh, like, really? Yeah, I don't even think they did, from what mm -hmm. I remember. So he yeah, definitely rubs people the wrong way, but he's a good dude. Okay, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Later.